Another new concept that deals with momentum is that of impulse. Now, impulse is simply the change in momentum. When an object's momentum changes, it experiences an impulse. Now, we have, so delta P is the impulse. Now, we had this equation in our last video. The net force is equal to the change in momentum over, over the time that momentum has changed. Rearranging this for delta P, multiplying both sides by delta T, we see that the impulse is equal to the net force times the change in time. What does this mean? Well, this is actually an incredibly useful equation when you probably even used it intuitively when dealing with changing the momentum of something. For example, many of you might have done an egg toss at some point in your lives. The idea being as you take a raw egg and you toss it to a friend, that friend catches it, takes a step back and then tosses it to you you catch it, take a step back, and toss it once again. And the idea is to see how far apart you can get, your, your team can get, before the egg breaks. Well, when you catch something, a baseball or softball or football or whatever, you're changing its momentum. It has some velocity, it has some mass. When you catch it, you're changing that velocity to zero. You're stopping it. So the, you're applying an impulse to that object. Now, there are many ways you can apply that impulse, right? You can apply a large force over a short period of time, or you can apply a small force over a large period of time. Of course, when you're doing an egg toss, what you really want to do is supply a small force over a larger period of time, right? So you don't break the egg. A large force on the egg will break it. So what do you do? You cup the egg and you bring it down. You have soft hands is the expression in baseball, right? You use soft hands to slow the egg down or to slow the baseball down so there's less force on the ball and less force on your hand. You can catch a baseball barehanded, right? You can just go up there and hold your hand firm, don't even move it back, and have a baseball in your hand. That will stop it, but it will certainly, over that short period of time, will provide a very large force on your hand, causing it to you know, sting, burn, and so on. So if you have to change the momentum of an object, you're, you're, you're providing an impulse on that object. And you can do it with a large force or a small force. The only difference is how much time those forces apply. So a large force acting over a brief time provides the same impulse as a small force acting over a long period of time. This is incredibly useful when you're talking about airbags. It's another wonderful example. If your car didn't have airbags, then and you're in a collision with your car, let's imagine you're not wearing your seatbelt, or even if you are wearing your seatbelt, the dashboard does a very good job of stopping your forward momentum in a car crash, right? You're strapped into your car, but as soon as your car hits another car, hits a wall, your body wants to continue forward, the force of the dashboard on your face stops that forward motion. The dashboard is a very stiff object. It applies a very large force over a short period of time to change your momentum. That large force does a lot of damage on you, right? Breaks bones in your face, your chest, and so on. So the concept of an airbag an airbag is designed to provide a smaller force over a longer period of time. So during a collision, the airbag deploys very quickly, but you basically hit a pillow, right? A pillow of air that slows, like instead, so instead of hitting the dashboard directly and stopping abruptly, you have this cushion that slows you down before you get there. So it slows you down over a longer period of time, providing less force on your face and less likely to cause severe damage. That's the advantage of airbags. Modern cars are designed this way as well. If you go back into the 1950s, 1940s, the automobile industry built cars to last, right? They, these huge steel behemoths that you could take out a small tree and it would barely scratch the car type of a car. Those are not designed for passenger safety in mind. So if you were to hit another car, or hit a small tree or something like that, your car, or hit a deer on the road, your car might survive and might be fine, but you might not.
So modern cars are designed with crumple zones. The idea is if you are in an accident, that there's a cage around the passenger cabin that's rigid that will keep you safe, but the rest of the car can fold in. Increasing the amount of time of the impact, reducing the amount of force, making you safer. Now the downside is that means that your car is more likely to be totaled in an accident because it's designed to take those forces. So this is the concept of impulse. And impulse becomes very important when we start talking about the concept of conservation of linear momentum. 